Okay, today we're going to take a look at the box and pan brake over in the Tyler Metal Shop. This is a tool used to uh, bend sheet metal parts. Um, sometimes it's called a finger brake, uh, sometimes it's called a box and pan brake. It's basically um, a tool made to bend thin sheet metals in, uh, you can fold them 90, 45, uh, or anything less. Uh, I'm going to take you through how to basically uh, make a, a simple box um, that we might bring over to the spot welder later. Um, first thing you want to do is make sure that the material you're using is not too thin. And so over here we've got a sign that says 16 gauge. That's the thickest amount that you can uh, bend on here. And we have uh, once again one of these little gauge blocks uh, similar that you'll find on the jump shear. Um, but this guy can handle material that's a little bit thicker. We've got a few different pieces of material here that we can play with to see what's what's thin enough, thick enough. So here I've got a piece of uh, eighth inch material and if I try and fit that into my gauge, no go. So there you go, eighth inch material is too thick. Sorry kids. Um, so that guy goes away. This guy is uh, 16 gauge, happens to be brass, it's just what I had laying around. And if I test it out here in the gauge, uh, I'm pretty sure it'll slide in here. Um, Right now it's not cooperating, but uh, I had it cooperating earlier. Sometimes if you have a burr on the end of your material, it might, uh, it should slide in there pretty easy. Of course, it's making it a liar out of me once the video camera's rolling, but you can see it's it's sliding in there, so we're, we're just at our limit here. Um, so this guy would probably be fine, too. Um, and then I've got the material that I'm actually intending on bending here today, which is this thin 22 gauge uh, material. Uh, if you're going to try and do one of these box constructions with uh, the spot welder uh, and some of the tighter folds I'm doing here, you'll pretty much only be able to do them out of really thin stuff. If you try and do these double folds with uh, that you're going to see in a minute with the uh, 16 gauge, it's just not going to work for you. So. Um, the finger brake basically allows us to clear uh, some of the um, double folds so that we can actually make like a square box. Um, and so these are the, the fingers, if you will. They're adjustable. And what I did before I even laid this out was I measured my finger brake, made a simple paper template, and I uh, folded it up and made sure that I could get the, the fingers to basically support the material uh, successfully. Uh, once I transfer those lines over, I cut it mostly out on the jump shear. And then um, to do the hand work, you can do either a good pair of tin snips, uh, or you could also use one of the uh, bench top shears over on the funny table with all the other vices and clamps. You'll see him on the far side over there. Um, you'll have to uh, watch another video for that guy. So once you get those snips, uh, little tips here, um, you notice that you get a lot of dimpling here where your metal is now kind of misshapen. A really great uh, trick to flatten it out again is go to a flat surface somewhere in the shop, grab a big hunking piece of something else flat, and then basically just give it a good whack. So there you go. It's nice and flat again. And then anything that uh, you need to correct you can do so that way. Sorry for the loud noises. If you have any edges that are a little bit um, jagged or need a little tuning up, um, you can always go uh, at them with a little file uh, off the edge of a table. and That'll kind of clean things up. This guy happens to be like a knife edge file, so I can even clean up in some of these little inside corners. Just a few little tips there. If you're having trouble with the tin snips, and files, well, you might want to invest in a pair of your own. The ones in the shop get really abused from the folks who aren't as familiar with the shop. Now, let's go set up the box and pan brake. First thing to note is um, I would like to fold my tabs and my other sides in one go here. Um, then I'm going to bring it over to my finger and then fold the other half. And then look, oops, that finger is not going to be the right size for me. Um, so what I'm going to need to do is find a finger that will do the, the task. So around the back of the machine here, we have this little tray. And in that tray, you'll find a few of the different fingers. Um, if you ever remove one of the fingers, um, then you should probably return them to that location. And you can see that I designed this so that I would fit just snugly inside there. This is a three inch um, finger. And so I made my pan about 
three and an eighth or so, just a little bit of clearance on either side. So let's, um, so you can find all the little holders and, and nuts and bolts. Don't lose those. Make sure that they live back with the machine. So let's show you how to install one of these guys. So one thing that's a little tricky that some people uh, don't realize is that sometimes these uh, little top portions are off completely. Always hand thread these guys on first. You don't want to cross thread those because then this piece here that they thread into is really uh, really challenging to uh, remake. So we don't want to ruin those parts. Always hand thread them first and then once you, the threads are biting then you could use a wrench. Uh, the way we install these they grab both here and they also grab in a little slot that's underneath there. I might try and pop the camera off the tripod so you can see it and you'll see in here there's a little groove back there so trying to do it one-handed is a little challenging but you want to have both the top and the inner portion way in here grab as well as up here so once you get that more or less in place um, then we'll tighten up with with a wrench so let me get myself set back up here Okay, so once you get that finger more or less put in place um, loosely, then you'll want to tighten it down. So first, uh, again, we'll just um, give ourselves a little clearance between these fingers. We'll go hand tight for now. And then one thing I like to do is bring this little clamp down and just make sure that this line is consistent across the whole machine. And if we're good there, then we could use a, it's a 5 16 Allen wrench. This is standard, not metric, and then we'll just give it a good tighten, snug it up. Okay, so the basic operation of this machine is pretty straightforward. What you do is, you take, this is just a little scrap here, you take this little clamping arm, let me get a better shot of that, so you take this little clamping arm, you lift it uh, or push it back there, that opens up the machine, then you clamp down on your part preferably on the line that you're trying to bend. And then you grab this uh, large handle up here and push it back to do your bend. So if, as I push back, you'll see that that material gets folded. Then you can bring it up, you know, a little past 90 if you're trying to do a 90, and then, uh, or it'll go all the way to a 45, and that'll give you your uh, bend. So that's what you're trying to uh, achieve when you're doing these uh, box and pan fold. So you can kind of do anything with this machine that will allow you to do that. Eventually uh, the machine will interfere with itself if you try and do really crazy bends, but I'm just showing you the, the intended purpose of this, which is to make boxes and pans. You can do anything that your imagine, imagination of the machine will allow. So here we'll actually try and uh, fold up our lines. So I'll get a shot here. Hopefully it'll catch all the action. Uh, first thing I'll do is line up across my tabs and I'll bring this uh, down slowly and then pinch where I need it. And I'll fold this guy up to about 90 degrees. You could use a square if you need to. Uh, I'm just going to eyeball it for now. So there's our, our approximate 90. Ooh, uh, I did forget to do my little uh, returns here. So these, when you're using thin sheet metal. I did a little oopsie here. No editing, kids. Um, we're going to try and achieve this, um, these little folds. With really thin material, um, you can kind of um, fold over the edges and then use the machine to kind of clamp down. Here you'll see how this box and pan setup makes life a little easier. So I, I did my little oopsie and this will allow me to get a little tighter fold and then you can use the machine itself to crush that bend back down. So that's a really great way to get rid of those sharp edges on this really thin stuff. Uh, so I'll do the same with this guy on my line. I should have done this first by the way so I didn't uh, mess up my box. It might be a little off by the end. but So we go as far as the machine will allow and then we use the machine itself to fold that back down. If we wanted to, we could use that same trick as before with the uh, big piece of flat metal and smash it down, but you actually want a little radius on there. So let's get these other two 
folded. And we'll hopefully not ruin our other bends there too badly. And now we'll try and salvage this little mess I made by crushing it uh, down. I might be able to do this by hand on the, here you go, a little bit of live action uh, metal work. We'll grab this material supported on the edge here. A few. It's in that general direction. Another thing I could do is unbend it um, and then use my flatter technique, but um, oh, that's a pretty dog-eared mess. Sorry. Um, well, once we've got it roughly wrinkled there, you see what happens when you're uh, out of practice. Um, so we'll try and salvage that with this folding operation. So, could have been worse. Um, so let's get our tabs back in order here with just this big straight die. This is normally when you start actually folding things up. Um, so here's our 90 again, a little slightly past. And then we could do our other side, line up on our line. And then now before you go and finish these bends, you might want to basically um, bend in these tabs just ever so slightly and that will allow for them to clear the inside there. So now we can move over to the other, um, the other finger that I put on here and hopefully these tabs will clear. And so hopefully you have a half decent shot of that. So we'll clamp on our line and then we'll fold up, making sure our tabs hit nicely. And then now you can see the box starting to form and then we'll get these tabs. So you can see why I made that about three and an eighth. Um, so that I had a little bit of clearance when I was doing this tab construction. If you weren't using the tab construction, uh, maybe you're going to weld those corners. If you were using 16 gauge, um, then you you know you might be able to go right on three inches. So a little bit of clamping back together, and then maybe over to the spot welder, and we can get these um, this little box welded together. You could also use pop rivets uh, if you're really good. You could use the TIG welder um, and close up these these little seams here. Uh, but it should give you a pretty nice little box. So uh, don't use any equipment you're not cleared on. Always check the thickness with your thickness gauge and um, don't ever over tighten things. Uh, always use the appropriate size wrench and finger uh, thread things before you go using a wrench on them so you don't cross thread things. That is the box and pan break uh, over in the Tyler Metal Shop.